The one thing that all weight loss and diet programs have in common is that they use the scale as a success indicator. In other words, if the scale moves down, the program is working and you feel successful. If the scale does not move down, then the program is not working and you feel like a failure. Welcome, I'm Stavros Mostrogenis, the founder of the Live Your Weight Thin System, an unconventional approach to weight loss that helps people lose weight for life by helping them redevelop five simple habits that used to be part of human life, but most modern societies have forgotten and our weight and health is paying the price. In today's video, I want to talk about why using the scale as your success indicator is a mistake when it comes to sustainable uh, weight loss. I know what you're thinking. The whole reason a person goes on a diet or joins some uh, weight loss program is to lose weight. Of course, you will, you, you will use the scale as your success indicator. Isn't the whole uh, goal of any weight loss uh, or diet program to lose weight? On the surface, that makes uh, a very good argument. But if you dig a little deeper, you will see that using the scale as your success indicator almost always backfires. And let me explain why that is. Most people need to change between three to five habits to lose weight. Most weight loss programs help people make all the necessary changes in their habits all at once so they can see fast results. In most cases, the scale does move down and people feel successful. But what happens after that? 95% of the people who lose weight with those methods burn out by too much change and end up quitting and gain the weight back. So as you can see, although they saw the scale move down and felt successful, they still burnt out and end up gaining the weight back. As you might have heard me say many times before, the only way or the best way to achieve sustainable weight loss is to make permanent changes in your daily habitual behaviors. The best way to make permanent changes in your daily habitual behaviors is to work on changing one habit at a time. But here's the problem with that approach if you use the scale as a success indicator. As I mentioned before, on average, most people need to change between three to five habits before they start to lose weight. So let's say after developing the first habit, the scale does not move. So then you develop the second habit, but the scale still doesn't move. Using the scale as a success indicator might frustrate you and make you feel that this is not working. And if you're one of those people who needs to change at least four habits before you lose weight, so even after changing the third habit, you don't see any weight loss, chances are you will feel like this is not working and you will end up uh, quitting. So you see, whether you lose weight the fast way or the right way, chances are you will end up quitting if you use the uh, scale as your success indicator. So what is the solution? Don't use the scale as your, as your success indicator. Instead, use the progress that you're making on the habits you're trying to develop. I understand that weight loss is the ultimate goal, but keep in mind that weight gain is only a symptom of your habitual behaviors. Your habits are the real problem. So your success indicator should be on how you're progressing on changing the habits that got you overweight in the first place. The only thing the scale would tell you is if you change enough habits, to affect your weight. Let me give you an example of how I track progress with my clients. After the initial consultation, where we are identify all the healthy habits that are missing, which we need to develop, we list them in order of importance and we start with the first one. So let's say for this example, the first healthy behavior we want to develop is the exercise habit. I don't expect for a second that somebody who does not exercise at all will start to exercise and become active five days per week. So instead, we start slow. The first week, we want to make sure that you do some kind of walking three times for at least five minutes each time, and you do some form of uh, resistance training at least once. As long as you do that the first week, we consider that a successful week. The following week, we want to step it up. And let's say you end up walking four times that week uh, for at least five minutes each time, and you end up doing two resistance training workouts. That is great. This is another successful week because you made progress. You exercised more than you did the previous week. The idea is to get to the point 
that you do some form of aerobics like walking four to five times per week of 20 minutes or more each time. Also, we want to get to the point that you do uh, some form of resistance training two times per week. As long as you are making progress towards that, consider yourself successful. Once we've developed the habit of exercising, we move to the next habit and we follow the same process. As long as we're making progress towards developing that habit, we're successful. As far as the scale goes, we do weigh-ins uh, after developing its habit. If the scale did not move after developing uh, the first habit, it does not mean we're failing. It means we have not changed enough habits. And this is how we move from habit to habit until we have changed enough habits to affect your weight and health. The one thing to keep in mind during this whole process is that it's never about whether or not you can lose weight. It's about how many habits you need to change before you start losing weight. And this is the mindset you must maintain during this whole process. If you need any help with losing weight and uh, getting in shape for life, check out my Live Your Way Thin system and the three ways that you can join by going to www.liveyourwaythin.com. I've included a link in the description of this video. I hope you found this my video helpful. If you did, I would greatly appreciate it if you hit the like button. It really helps with the algorithm so more people can find my video. Comment below if you want me to cover something specific and don't forget to subscribe to my channel by clicking the subscribe button below so you never miss a video. Also, I would greatly appreciate it if you share this video with your family and friends to help me spread the truth on how sustainable weight loss and good health can be achieved. Thank you. Thank you.